In this video, we'll make an in-game options menu using Unity. Here we'll be able to adjust stuff like volume, resolution, graphics quality, and full screen mode. Also, before we get started, I want to mention that my friends over at DevDoc have created a huge Christmas calendar giveaway. They're giving away a crazy amount of Unity assets and other game dev goodness. All you need to do is visit the link in the description and enter your email to get a daily chance of winning some of these awesome prizes. And don't worry, you won't be spammed with all sorts of random email. So I really encourage you to check that out, and without further ado, let's get into the video. So as you can see, I've set up some simple UI for our options menu. In here I have a resolution dropdown, a full screen toggle, a graphics dropdown, and a volume slider. If you want to learn how to use the UI system to set up something like this, I have plenty of videos that you can check out. I definitely recommend watching my previous tutorial on setting up a main menu. But if we hit play, we can see that these options currently don't do anything. I can definitely adjust them, but they aren't hooked up to our game in any way. So that's what we're going to be doing in this video. All the sprites that I'm using in this video are from Ultimate Game UI. It's an amazing pack that's free on the asset store, so you should definitely check it out. As you can see, they have a lot of stuff for you to easily make cool looking menus. But you can of course use any graphics that you'd like. So let's begin by configuring our volume slider. You can see that I'm using the ordinary slider component. Component. Now let's hook this up to a script. We can place the script anywhere we want. I'm just going to select my canvas. I'm going to hit add component and let's call it the settings menu. Let's select C sharp and hit create an add. We then double click it to open it up in Visual Studio. And the first thing that I want to do is delete our two methods and instead create our own one. We'll make sure to mark it as public so that we can trigger it from our slider. We'll make it void because we don't want to return anything. And let's call it set volume. We'll then take in a value from our slider. This is going to be of type float because we want a value with decimal places. And let's just call it volume. Now we can easily set it up so that whenever we move our slider, this function will get called and Unity will then feed in the current value of the slider as volume. Just to show you this happening, let's go ahead and write debug.log and let's display the volume variable. If we now save this, go into Unity, select our volume slider and scroll down to where it says on value changed. This is an event that will trigger whenever our slider changes. We can then add an action to this event by hitting the plus sign. Let's then drag in the object that our script is sitting on that's in our case the canvas. We now view all the components on this canvas. I'm going to go into our settings menu script and you can see that our function set volume now appears here. It also says that it takes in a float. But instead of selecting it from the list down here, let's go to the top where it says dynamic float. And here it also appears. The reason why our function gets put to the top is that Unity recognizes that our function takes in a float value. And so Unity will automatically input the value of our slider into that float. So let's select the method at the top here. And my slider is set to go between negative 80 and 0. I'll show you why in just a second, but we should now see that if we hit play and I start to drag on this slider, a bunch of messages will appear in our console. And that as I decrease the slider, the value that they show gets reduced. So if I drag it all the way to the bottom, we can see it says negative 80. And if I drag it all the way to the top, it says zero. Awesome. Now all we need to do is use this value to control the volume of our game. To do that, we'll go window and we'll open up the audio mixer. I'm just going to dock this by the game view and you might already have added a mixer to your game. If not, we can go and hit the plus sign. This will create a mixer in our project panel. I'm just going to rename this to main mixer and here we can create different channels for the different layers of audio in our game. We could have one for music, one for gameplay sounds and so on. But we just want to adjust the volume of our master slider. We can do that by simply dragging on it in here, but how do we control this through script? Well, whenever we are working with the audio mixer, we have the possibility of exposing parameters. This means that we make values editable through scripts. In our case, we want to expose our volume parameter. So I'm going to select the master group here, go to the right where it says volume. I'm going to right click here and hit expose volume of master to script. Now at the top where it says exposed parameters, if we click here, we should see a new parameter this is a parameter for the volume and currently it's just called my exposed param. Let's right click on this, hit rename and let's just call it something like volume. And the reason why I chose my slider to go from 0 to negative 80 is that this is what our master does. It starts off at 0 and we can then decrease it all the way down to negative 80. So if we now open up our script, instead of just showing our volume in the console, let's change our volume on the mixer. To do that we need a reference to our audio mixer. So we'll create a public and to reference an audio mixer we need to be using the Unity Engine audio system. So at the top here, we'll write using Unity Engine dot audio 
And now we can create a public audio mixer. We'll call it audio mixer. And then inside of our set volume function, we'll go audio mixer dot set float. And the float that we want to set is our volume. Make sure you spell this in the exact same way that you did when renaming the parameter. And we'll then set a value for this parameter. In our case, we just want to set it to volume. So whatever the value of our slider is. If we now save this and go into Unity, we can dock our audio mixer to the right of our game view. We can then select our canvas and we now have an empty slot for our audio mixer. This is where we'll drag in our main mixer. And if we now hit play and drag on our slider, we can see the value updating for our master as well. Awesome. So next we want to change the graphics quality of our game. Well, we want to be doing this using our graphics dropdown. This is just a standard UI dropdown. And I've simply gone in and changed the options to low, medium, and high. You can have as many options as you want here. The only thing that we need to make sure is that they match with the graphic settings in Unity. So if we go edit, project settings, quality, we need to have the same amount of quality levels. As you can see, I have a high, a medium, and a low. And I'm just going to default to high here. Now let's go to our canvas and open up our settings menu and we're now ready to add another function. Again we want to make it public so that we can call it from our drop down. We'll write void and let's name the method something like set quality. We'll then take in an integer. This is going to be the index of the element that we've chosen. So if we select low, this is going to be zero. Medium, this is going to be one and high, it's going to be two. Let's call this value something like quality index. And this part is actually insanely easy. All we need to do is access our quality settings. And here we can set the quality level. And this method simply takes in our index. So we'll input our quality index. And that should actually be it. And all we need to do is hook up our graphics drop down to call this method. To do that, we'll scroll down to where it says on value changed. Again, this is an event that will be triggered whenever we change our drop down. Let's add an action to this event. We want our action to access our canvas object because on our canvas object, we have our settings menu. And again, you'll see our function appears in two places, both in the bottom list here where it says set quality. And we can see it takes in an integer, but also under dynamic int. And this is of course the one that we want to choose. Because just like with our slider, Unity will now automatically set our quality index to the index of the element that we chose. And so we should see that if we hit play, and let's go under edit, project settings, quality, so we can see this updating in real time. We then use our drop down, and let's try and change to medium first. We can see it changes to medium over here. If we then try and select low, again, we can see the level changing. And we also now start to see that things don't look as sharp as they did before. So let's hurry up and bump that back to high. Awesome. The next thing that we want to hook up is our full screen toggle. This is just a simple toggle UI element. Again, let's go to our canvas and open up our settings menu. For this, we want to create yet another method. Again, it's going to be a public void. We'll call it set full screen. This time it's going to take in a boolean because our toggle is either going to be true or false. Let's just call it is full screen. And this is actually also really simple to change. All we need to do is go screen dot full screen and set it equal to our is full screen variable. Now again, we need to hook this up to our UI. So we'll go into Unity. We'll select our full screen toggle. At the bottom here where it says on value changed, we want to add an action. So whenever we mess with our toggle, we want something to happen. Here we want to reference our canvas where our script is. We then want to go under our script. And again, at the top here under dynamic bowl, we should now see our set full screen method. And just like with our drop down and with our slider, Unity will automatically set the value of our is full screen variable to whatever the value of our toggle is. Which means that if we just go ahead and hit play, we can now switch in and out of full screen. Of course, this isn't really visible, but that's only because we're playing inside of the editor. We can simply build our game in order to see this take effect. But before we do that, there's a final thing that we want to add. I'm of course talking about our resolution drop down. Again, this is just a simple drop down. I've just put in three placeholder options. These really aren't important and you can simply remove them if you want. The reason why is that we don't know beforehand what options we have available. This is something that Unity will figure out for us because it's going to completely depend on what computer your game will run on. So before we start changing the resolution of our game, we need to make sure that we have the correct options. To do that, we'll again select our canvas and open up our settings menu. And at the top here, we'll now create a void start method. 
This is of course called as soon as our scene loads. And here we want to gather some information about what resolutions we have at our disposal. We can get an array, which basically just means a list of all of the resolutions by going screen dot resolutions. And let's go ahead and store these in a variable so we can access them later. To do that, we'll create a variable at the top called resolution. We want to turn this into an array, so we'll mark it with two square brackets. And let's call it resolutions. Then in the start method, we'll set our resolutions variable equal to screen.resolutions. We now want to go through and add each of the resolutions to our dropdown. To do that, we need a reference to our dropdown component. And because our dropdown is a UI element, we need to be using unityengine.ui. So let's go to the top here and add a line saying using unityengine.ui. Let's then create a variable that will reference our UI element. So public dropdown, and let's call it resolution dropdown. Then right after we get a list of all of the resolutions, we want to clear out the default options that we have on our dropdown to make sure that we start with a clean slate. To do that, we access our resolution dropdown and we call the function called clear options. And now we're ready to add some options. To do this, we'll be using resolution dropdown dot add options. And of course you might think to just put in our resolutions here and call it a day. But unfortunately, the add options takes in a list of strings and not an array of resolutions. So this won't work. We have to turn our array of resolutions into a list of nicely formatted strings. To do this, let's start by creating a list of strings Notice how I'm using a different syntax for creating this list. That's because this is in fact a list and not an array. The only difference is that an array has a fixed size, but the size of a list can be changed. So now we'll give our list a name. We'll just call it options and we'll set it equal to a new list of strengths. We can then loop through each element in our resolutions array. So for int i, i is less than resolutions dot length i plus plus. And for each element, we want to create a string called our option. And here we could display it something like the width of our resolution and then plus an x, so times, and then the height of our resolution. So to get the width of our resolution, we take the resolution that we're currently looking at, which is the ith element of resolutions, and then we can access dot width, and we do the same thing with height. So resolutions, and we give it the index i dot height. And we can then write options dot add to add an element to our options list. And here we simply give it the option string that we just created. And finally, when we're done looping through all of the elements, we'll tell our resolution dropdown to add some options. The options that we want to add is our options list. So now just to go through this, we clear out all the options in our resolution dropdown. We create a list of strings, which is going to be our options. We then loop through each element in our resolutions array. And for each of them, we create a nicely formatted string that displays our resolution and we add it to our options list. When we're done looping through, we'll add our options list to our resolution dropdown. If we save this now and go into Unity, we should get an empty slot here for our resolution dropdown. Here we of course want to drag in our dropdown. And if we now hit play, we should see that we have all the available resolutions in our dropdown. The only thing that it doesn't do is select the correct one right off the bat. To change this, let's go into our script. Right before we start looping, let's create an integer called our current resolution index. Let's just default it to zero. We'll then go into our for loop and we'll check if resolutions to the ith element, so the resolution that we're currently looking at, is equal to screen dot current resolution. So if the current resolution we're looking at is equal to our resolution, well then we want to go ahead and set our current resolution index equal to i. There's just one slight problem with this and this is extremely annoying and that is that you can't compare two resolution types. Don't ask me why this isn't in here. So we actually have to compare first the width and then the height of both resolutions. So resolutions to i dot width is equal to screen dot current resolution dot width and, and we'll put in two ands here, resolutions to i dot height is equal to screen dot current resolution dot height. So now we compare both the width and the height of our resolutions. And if they both match up, well then we are looking at the correct resolution. So we store the index of that. And then after we add all the options, we can go resolution dropdown dot value 
and set it equal to our current resolution index, as well as go resolution dropdown dot refresh shown value in order to actually display it. Now I know this code doesn't feel pretty, but updating resolutions in Unity has always been a bit of a hassle. But that's all right, because this should actually work now. So if we save this, go into Unity and hit play, you can see that it automatically sets itself to full HD, which I know is indeed the default resolution for my system. Then we can of course go in here and change it, but this doesn't update. Fortunately, updating your resolution is much, much easier. All we have to do here is create another function just like we did with all of our other properties. We'll create a public void set resolution. This is going to take in a integer called our resolution index. This works in the exact same way that it did for our set quality dropdown. Now inside of this function, we'll write screen dot set resolution. Now this takes in a width and a height, as well as a boolean saying whether or not we want the game to be displayed in full screen. To get the width and the height, we need to simply use our resolution index to find the correct element in our resolutions array. So we'll create a resolution variable here. Let's call it resolution. We'll set it equal to resolutions, and as the index, we'll give it our resolution index. So now we've found the resolution that we want to select in our array, and we then simply use resolution.width as well as resolution.height. And as for the full screen parameter, well, let's just use screen.fullscreen, just like we did down here. So we'll input screen.fullscreen. And voila! If we now save this, go into Unity, select our resolution dropdown, scroll to the bottom, let's add a new action to our on value changed event, let's drag in our canvas, go under our settings menu, and choose set resolution as the function. We then save our scene, go file, build settings, we'll drag in our scene to the scenes and build. Let's hit build and run. I'm going to create a separate folder for this and let's name it test build. Now Unity is going to start building our game. It's going to open up in full screen and we should now see that we can adjust the resolution of our game, choose whether or not we want it to be full screen. We can change the graphics quality and adjust the volume. Awesome. Finally, now that we have our settings menu, we can go edit, project settings, go under player, and here under standalone player options, we can make sure to set display resolution dialog to disabled so that we don't get that annoying default settings window before we play the game. And that should be it. Yay! That's pretty much it for this video. Again, if you haven't checked out the Christmas calendar giveaway, there's a link for that in the description. The DevDoc guys are super nice and definitely deserve a big thanks for setting up this cool event. Other than that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all of the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in November and a special thanks to Dudeman, Armin Narusi, Hans Hoftoon, Cyborg Mummy, Cole Cabral, Dan Evans, John Beauregard, Superman the Great, James P, Thomas Wally, Jason Latito, Derek Heemskirk, Basil Marify, Rob Fern, James Rogers, Alex Rakitsky, Manalis, Omar Chime, Robert Bund, and Peter Locke.